Pyrugus. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sitting on the floor with a whole pile of gear, and I'm going to go through everything I'm bringing on a week-long winter wilderness adventure. First thing I want to say real quick is that I know I said I was going to be doing a hot tent video and going with funk and stuff. Well, life happened. Um, there was two big reasons. One of them was getting ready for this trip. I wanted to make sure I had ample time, and I'm super glad I did give myself extra time. The second reason is we woke up. We were pretty much packed and ready to go. We woke up in the morning. It was negative 10. So that means we're going to go out in the, the negative 10 and set up. And we were just like, you know what? <laughs> we kind of want to sleep in today. And then, yeah, it turned into just, we slept in, didn't go out that day. And then the next day, we didn't really have time with her work schedule and me getting ready for this trip. And, uh, yeah, it just didn't happen. So that's all I can say about that. Okay. Okay, so, so on this week-long trip, I am not bringing Monty because of, if you've been watching the channel, you'll know why. He's not coming along. It's just going to be me, JC Guy, and his buddy, Ken. And we are going to be going for, I think, six nights. Could be seven, but I'm pretty sure it's just six. Um, two things that I'm not going to go over in this video is food and my camera equipment. I'm not going to show it because it's still charging. I'm bringing out 16 DSLR batteries, 16 GoPro batteries, um, four... Uh, 10,000 milliamp power packs for charging up my batteries and I'm um, using my Nikon D5500 with a Rode Go mic on top and a GoPro 8? Monty, you're knocking over my stuff. What are you doing? Stop being a monster. He's been following me because he always likes going winter camping, but it's going to be very cold. We're going to have temperatures just, just above zero as highs for most of the trip in Fahrenheit. So anyways, food, I'm not going to go over because we're making a lot, we're making some delicious food and it's all packed and it's just, I'm just, the only mention I'll make about that is I've got most of my spices and Montreal oil, all these teeny little half ounce and one ounce Nalgene's half cup, one cup. Yeah. So that's, that's where all that stuff is. It's all kind of packed and it's, it's not done yet. And I'm leaving tomorrow morning early. So I'm running out of time. So let's begin by going from right to left. Um, I mentioned this before. I'm buy, I bought. I was going to buy a toboggan, and I got one. It's a Black River Sled 7-foot toboggan. I have not used it yet, which I'm sad about, but I'm actually going to, when this video is over, put everything on it, completely pack up, and I'm going to go take it for a walk in the dark because it's nighttime, and I've got to test it and just see what it's like. I'll, I'll load it up at the end of the video. So I'm using that, and then with that, the person I bought it from suggested these bags. So I got a six foot bag here. This is gonna go over top and it cinches down on top of the whole toboggan. And I've got two of these three foot bags that are gonna, I'm gonna load up all my stuff in, in these three bags here for the most part. And then it'll make it easier to put in the toboggan, put a tarp over it, and cinch it down. So I'm just gonna, we're just going to throw this stuff over here. Okay, then of course I'm bringing out the hot tent. This is a Esker Classic 10x10 square with a Nico Trekker stove. I'm bringing the little plate and the center pole. And I'm actually going to have Jake and Ken carry the stove, the plate, and the pole. And I'm just going to take the tent part. Um, and we're going to be spending most of the time in the hot tent because it's going to be very cold. And the temperatures at night are not supposed to get above zero Fahrenheit the whole trip. It's supposed to be in the negatives the whole time. So it's going to be very cold. Monty, I see ya. I see ya, pal. I know. You probably want dinner. You probably want dinner. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay. Let's keep going. So let's go over. Monty. I know. I'm, 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 I know you're not coming and you're probably sad. But it's for your own good. It's going to be too cold. It's going to be too cold for you. Stay here. Stay as long as you can. Stay as long as you can. Okay, so for the tarp, I'm going to put over those bags that I just showed you. I got this just 8x10 cheapo tarp to get from your local department store. I'm bringing out two tall Nalgene's. got water in them. We're going to be boiling uh, lake water the whole time or snow for our drinking water. 
Um, I've got a first aid kit with this, this is just custom, and I've just got a bunch of stuff in here. I'm not going to go over this because everyone's first aid kit is different. So I'm just going to throw that off to the side. And then we've got this bag here, which has got 300 feet of paracord. It's got my toiletries, like my toothbrush, uh, floss sticks. I've got three Omega, three uh, Omega USA carabiners. I've got two bottles of lotion for because my skin gets dry because my psoriasis. I've got some hand sanitizer. I've got uh, some wilderness wipes because we're not going to be able to bathe because it's going to be cold. And then I've got some playing cards. I bring some extra quart freezer bags, extra quart gallon bags, and two trash bags. And then I've got a couple packs, a one pack here of uh, hot hands hand warmers just in case. What else do I got here? I got two books. What else is in here? I think that's pretty much it. I've got a couple other goodies in here, but I won't mention that until we get to the next part. So yeah, this is pretty much just toiletries, book, cards, little extra stuff, and paracord. Monty, what are you doing? Monty. He was just thrashing around my little spice bottles like they were a toy. Monty, come on. He's like, come on, Dad. You're not gonna, you're not gonna bring me. I'm gonna mess with you. I'll make this more difficult for you. Okay. So continuing on, I'm just gonna throw this stuff off to the side because we've got a lot to go through and we don't have a ton of time. I gotta edit this up. I got a whole bunch of stuff I still gotta do tonight. Anyways, let's keep going. Like I said, so we got the two Nalgene's. I'm bringing out dual great grates. These are the Coglins. Uh, pack grill thingy, two of them, because we're going to try to cook it over some fire. Uh, I bring out my cutting board. I don't even have a clue what this is. It's just a generic that size cutting board, kind of thick. It's not too pliable like my old one I used to use. And then we've got our cookware. I'm bringing out my MSR mug with a mug mate for coffee. And then I got the little lid in there. Put that there. I've got the light my fire spork. I've got my two open L fillet knives for food prep, and if we catch fish, I've got my teeny little spatula, which I don't really know what it is, but if you check out my description, there's a link to my Amazon store, and most of this stuff is on that uh, store. So like even these, I don't even know if they make them anymore, but the link to it is on there, so you can kind of see what it is, and you can just go from there. Then I have a big old, this is a solo stove, that was sent to me and I haven't got to use it yet, but we plan on making some bigger meals and this is for boiling water and just, it's kind of, kind of, I brought out enough cookware for the group. And then I've also got my MSR stowaway pot and inside that is a premise pot. This is going to be for scooping water out of the lake. And this one is just, like I said, extra, extra cookware all around. So we got that, then I'm bringing out two Primus pans. These are my campfire pans. I got the bigger one um, because we're going to be cooking for three people, like I said. So I want to make sure to have enough pans and pots. And I've got some extras that I'm giving to the other guys to bring along. And then I've got a lid for this. And this all, I'll just have to deal with this after, but this all fits in this little bag here and I kind of just stuff it in. Yeah, so lots of cookware. There's going to be a lot of weight going into this trip and what I'm bringing out. And that's why I'm hoping this new toboggan here, I've got ample room, but I'm just hoping it makes it a little easier for a dragon. Uh, continuing on, I've got my 10 by 13 AquaQuest tarp. I hope we don't have to use this, but we might just set up a lean-to near the hot tent. It's all gonna be up in the air. I've never gone this long winter camping, so I'm bringing out lots of extra stuff that I probably don't need, but I've got the room, and you know, I don't mind dragging it. I'd rather have more and not need it, then need it, and you know, not have it, because this is definitely something I've never done before. So we got the hot tent, got all that. Then I've got my Poly Pro Tools shovel. This thing is indestructible. I know people got those little collapsible shovels, but I, this thing, you, you pretty much can't break it. I mean, I just beat the crap out of it, and it still looks, besides the scratches, it still works the same, and just, it's, in, it's practically invincible unless you really try. And then for my jacket, I always wear, for my layers, I always use Smart Wool NTS uh, mid-250s. I got uh, 
four tops and four bottoms all together. I've got my Carhartt hoodie and some cheapo flannel that I always use as my layering system. That's pretty much all I've got for layers. It's the four tops, four bottoms, the two shirts, and then my Carhartt uh, shoreline jacket and bibs. Now this is what I wear all winter long, cold springs and cold falls, and I always run the same layering system. I just keep moving for the most part. I don't, if it's, you know, zero degrees outside with some wind, I'm not gonna be just sitting still outside getting blasted by the wind. I'm gonna either be moving or chilling in the hot tent or be next to a hot fire. So that's pretty much the way I run with that. Just throw that out of the way. Just gonna make my life way harder for when this is all done. <laughs> Anyways, keeping on going, I've got a new hail axe with the leather guard oiled up and ready to go. I've had this for a while and I just haven't used it and I destroyed my other one. All I need to do is replace the handle but I didn't have time so I broke out the new one and I put the leather guard on it. So we're starting fresh there. This is a Grands Forest Brook Scandinavian Forest Axe and I do plan on fixing that other one later and doing that but didn't have time. Just decided I'm bringing this new one and my old one which I would have been fine with using but when I was looking and I was pulling on it you could see a split starting to form down the handle so the handle needs to be replaced ASAP and I wasn't willing to risk it. I wanted to bring out a sturdy tool. So anyways, other than that, I've got a Boreal 21, or a Boreal 24, uh, an Agua Canyon Boreal 24 bow saw. And I've got replacement parts, and I've got an extra blade, and I'm also letting Jake use my 21 inch one. And I've got an extra blade for that one as well. So we're gonna be needing to process a lot of wood. I wanted to make sure to have extra parts. I've got a multi-tool that's somewhere in here and I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we were gonna be able to keep sawing wood. Cause like I said, it's not like summertime where I can just be fine with no fire and no heat, anything. This is winter, this is super cold. We're gonna want uh, fire, we're gonna need it. And uh, yeah, definitely wanna have the right tools. Moving on from there, I've got a Nils uh, ice auger. Now this is something that's also a new purchase. I do not ice fish. I've never, I've ice fished just like if someone else set it up, but I've never gone out on my own and it's something I've wanted to get into. So I forced myself to buy a nice ice auger that is good for cutting holes quick. And that's the whole reason I bought this. I spent a little bit more than I needed to, but from what I saw, this is the fastest, least amount of work cutting, and we're gonna have three people needing water, and we're gonna be ice fishing. So, we're gonna be drilling holes, we're gonna be already working by how far we're hiking and whatnot. I wanted to make this part a little bit easier, so I invested in this. Haven't used it yet, which is not smart, but that's what, neither here nor there. This kind of screws on here. Bringing this out, this is for the group. We are going to need this and we are going to get some use out of that. And then on top of that, like I said, we're doing ice fishing. So I've got some extra line. I've got a hand-me-down tip-up from my dad. He gave me this and it's got some old line in here, but that's why I brought extra. So we've got a tip-up and then I've got a tackle box with lures. So what I'm bringing out is some tube jigs. I'll just show you. I've got some of these here tube jigs. I've got my old white Mr. Twister thingies that I always usually use. I've got some gold and silver spoons and some Kamuki Smartfish, which I heard were great for catching lakers, which is what I'm trying to catch. Then I've got a few snap swivels and stuff. And that's pretty much all I'm bringing for tackle. And on top of that, I've got a hand-me-down pole my dad's letting me use that he had just sitting around. I hope it's not gonna break, but I just used one of my open face reels I put on 10 pound test braided line and eight pound test fluorocarbon as a leader and I got about 10 feet of that. So this is gonna, I'm just gonna jig for Lakers and then I will set up a tip up when I'm not jigging and we're gonna go for pike, lake trout, walleye and I think Jake said something about burbot. We might try some burbot. Okay, what else? I know this is a lot and this is coming off fast but I've been up all day drinking coffee like crazy, packing and it just, it's which you're just gonna have to pay attention to this ride. I said it was gonna be a short video, but it's probably still gonna be like an hour. 
but I'm talking as fast as I can without screwing up. <laughs> okay, so my backpack that I'm gonna wear on my back. Now, some people go winter camping on these longer trips and don't bring a backpack. This is actually made so that you don't need a backpack. Here, let me just, see this part, this is what drags, you just put this around your waist or your chest and you pull it, but I like to bring a backpack, especially with other people and whatnot because Let's say you want to go to a day adventure. I want to have a backpack that I can pack full of everything I need to survive the night um, and bring it out with me. Or let's say someone gets seriously injured um, and they need to stay in the hot tent. I don't want to drag my whole sled out, you know, if I need to go make like a life-saving walk out and get help, which would take, you know, a day or two. I want to have a backpack and I want to move. So that's pretty much another, just a reason. I hope it doesn't come to that, but still, you know, This guy is quite nosy, and uh, yeah, he he wants to come, but Monty, he always gets so pushy when there's camping gear getting ready. <gasps> Monty, please, I'm trying to make a video here. Anyways, okay, so in my backpack, I am trying to keep this as light as possible. I'm going to use it to attach to the sled and drag, but I'm pretty much only putting my warm sweatshirt, my flannel, and a couple of layers that I can change in and out of for the hike. And then I'm gonna keep my camera batteries in here. My whole camera pack is gonna stay in here because this will be touching my back and it'll be a little bit warmer than the sled will be. So I'm hoping that that few degrees difference from the heat of my back maybe transferring through into the bag and stuff in between layers will keep those batteries just slightly less cold. And then other than that, I've got two rolls of TP in there. Money, please. And then I think that is it. Oh, and then I've got my sunglasses. And then I'm going to put some goggles, snowboarding goggles. Now these are Funk snowboarding goggles. I could not find mine. Um, so these are just going to have to do because we plan on having wind chills and just who knows what cold and you don't want to be getting blasted in the face. So I've got these and I'm just going to bring them. They fit my face enough so it'll, okay, it'll work. Um, yeah, they'll work. I'm going to keep those in the bag as well. And then I still need to find, I have a face cover, like a buff. Um, I don't know where it is. Still got to find that. Anyways, moving on. I have got my Tubbs Panoramic 36 inch snowshoes. I've Got bought these like a year or two ago, and I love them. They, they've never come off my foot. They're great. I'll keep using them. And then I'm bringing out my muck boots. These are not insulated muck boots. They're muck masters. Um, my feet run warm, so what I do, my new thing is I wear these Seal Skins waterproof socks, and I wear those in these non-breathable muck boots, and what happens is the outside of these socks, when I pull these off at the end of the day, it's wet with sweat and it pulls that moisture outside of my foot and breathes it out because when I pull my foot out and I look at my socks it's bone dry so these have worked great and I wear these um, when I go canoe camping and stuff and I got I keep dry feet and these have worked in the winter so far the only problem is the back heels get destroyed and you pretty much ruin a pair of socks two pairs of socks a year so that's the one downfall if they made reinforced backs that would save them, but just the slight rubbing of hiking in them destroys them. So yeah, I bring out one pair of these. They're going to get a little stinky and the boys in the tent are going to have to get used to that, but it is what it is. So I've got an Invent Dry Sack. This has just got like, it's got four pairs of socks, two pairs of underwear, and the rest of my thermal layers that are not in here. And that's all I've got for clothing. And then we've got over here, we've got my Helionox one chair with a sheet. And then I've got a new thing that I purchased. So I've got the three new purchases here. I've got the ice auger. I've got the toboggan with the bags, which was not cheap, but it's supposed to be really good. And then I've got this Helionox table because we're going to be spending a week in the hot tent with not much room, going to be very cramped. A teeny little table is going to be nice and it's pretty lightweight. I tested it out and it's, you know, it's not huge, but it's just going to be nice having a table for the whole group. Okay. And then what we've got here is I've got two pairs of my black diamond 
uh, gloves. Now, these ones are kind of old and worn, and these ones are a little more newish. I'm bringing them both. Um, these ones just get soaked nowadays. I put a new thing of the Nick Wax on here. So, uh, yeah, I just want to be warm. I want to have warm fingers. So I'm bringing two, bringing some extra. And then for a hat, I've got my, it's FRR. It's a Canadian rabbit fur trapper's hat. This is my super warm hat that I wear when I'm at camp around a fire. What else we got? I got my map. Bringing my map. I've got a, this is an REI extra large quick dry towel. Only bringing one of those. I've got some Vortex Diamond binoculars. Now, um, I was debating if I wanted to bring these or not, but we're going to be sitting at camp a lot, you know, checking out the lake. Hopefully we see some wolves or moose or anything cool. Going to need some binoculars to do that. And, uh, yeah, I don't normally bring these out. These are something I save, save for fall time of year, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to start bringing these out camping more. Anyways, moving on. Let's go with this little bag. Now, this is my, like, kind of essentials bag. I've got my Benchmade Bushcrafter here with a fire steel. I'm bringing out Black Diamond Moji Lantern. This is for the hot tent. Now, I've got three of these. I've got the middle one, I've got the big one, and I've got a smaller one. And the reason I'm bringing out all three is because last time when I went to Montana, Montana, I keep saying Montana, I went to Montana, I brought out this, and it died after the first night. And then we had to sit in the hot tent, and we just didn't have good lighting, and we had to use our headlamps, and just, it's not enjoyable being in a hot tent for a week when you're just blasting each other in the face with your bright lights and this and that. So I'm bringing extra uh, lanterns just so that, just in case one dies. I, it's, it's a little unnecessary, I'll admit it, but... I'm bringing it anyways. Then I've got a second fire steel. This one I actually use a little bit more than this one because this one's so worn down. I've got a little case of waterproof matches. I've got four lighters wrapped in duct tape. And I wrap them in duct tape because if I break a rod, I can fix it. If I, you know, uh, I burned a hole in my other down sleeping bag, I just put a piece of duct tape over it. It's still on there. It still works. Anything really, you know. Duct tape is so useful, uh, it's very useful. So I wrap my lighters, you know, in a, in a good sheet of about that length. And I like to have lighters as backup. I'm bringing out two headlamps. I've got a Black Diamond Storm. And I think this one's an old version of the Black Diamond Storm. And one thing I've noticed is, I've got a few of these. I've, I definitely have a lot of headlamps because I break them, I use them a lot and stuff. Um, the newest version, I'm not quite fond of. Now they go up in lumen, this is like the highest lumen one so far, but they do this thing now where they used to just, you know, as the batteries died it would just get dimmer, it would dimmer, dimmer until you just had barely enough light and then you knew like, okay, the batteries are dead. So what they do now is instead of that gradual decrease in brightness, it goes from bright and it'll turn on bright when the batteries are getting low and it'll just shut down to nothing and then it'll just be like the lowest of light possible. Then when you turn it off and done using it, you turn it back on, it's super, super bright, and then it shuts down to nothing. And that drives me nuts because, you know, when your eyes are used to the low amount of light you're just turning on and it's like memory and it stays, then it's fine, you know? You can deal with the tiny amount of light. But when it blasts you with a super bright light for just two seconds, your eyes are just like, ah! And then it goes to nothing and then you can't see. So that kind of drives me nuts. That was like that with my last one. And um, if, it, if it does this with this one too, this might be a newer version, I can't remember, but I broke my other one. So anyways, if it does it with this one, I think I might find a different headlamp. I don't know, this is a Black Diamond Storm, and if it keeps doing that bright thing, I do not like that feature. I like it to gradually dim into nothing. I, you know, just, I just explained it. I don't need to keep explaining it. And then I've got the little temperature thermometer thingies. I've got some Carmex. For my lips, you gotta have Carmex in winter or just chapstick of any kind. And then I've got my Benchmade Griptilian, and then I've got, this is the mini version, I've got one bigger because I like to have a camp knife. I, have, I always bring out three knives. Pocket knife that I keep in my jacket and just use all the time. Camp knife for just, because I like to have another knife. And then my big old Benchmade 
Kind of survival knife. <clears throat> oh, my voice is getting craggy. Oh, my fly is open. What's happening here? This this little guy here. Oh man, my voice is just like I'm talking too much too fast. It's getting dry and like crackly sounding. This guy does not want me to go without him. He usually does this and just lays on my stuff. You've seen him. Anyways, let's keep going. I've got a ground sheet that's going to go underneath my stuff in the hot tent because we have no floor. This is an Alps Mountaineering. Got it super cheap long time ago. Um, for sleeping, I am going to be using... Um, this is a Thermarest closed cell, non-insulator really ground sheet. This is a super backup in case all else fails. And I just like to have it because it helps keep you from sliding around on the snow. So this is nice. I've, I've started to... I usually just put this under Monty's, but I've got two of them now and I put one under me so I do that and then I'm bringing out two Neo Air X Therms now um, as you guys have noticed I popped a few pads on this channel and if I pop one out on this winter trip I will be very sad if I do not sleep comfortably for a week so I'm bringing out two I've got a whole bunch of patch kits in that I, I Probably didn't mention it, but I got patch kits in there along with my parts for the saw. And uh, yeah, in case one of the group needs one because theirs doesn't work, I've got the room. This doesn't weigh much. I don't care. And you know, this is the one that Funk was going to use or whatever. I'm just bringing out two. It is what it is. I'm not going to use them both at the same time. Or I could. Double cupping this. No, 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 we shouldn't do that. Okay, anyways, also got two of these Sea to Summit uh, Thermal Light liners. Bringing out two of those. I bring out two Nemo Pillow pillows because I have to have a knee pillow because I just get sore when I sleep and I will not be caught dead without a knee pillow. It is a survival item and I don't care what you say. <laughs> Need my knee pillow, my camp comforts. Okay, then I've also got a military surplus bivy sack. This is something I just started bringing out, and it's smart because it keeps everything waterproof. I usually wrap my sleeping pad in it or my sleeping bag. It's a little tough with my sleeping bag here to get it all in there because I can't roll around. It's kind of tight, but I'll still do it, you know, if I'm sleeping outside or in a Quincy. Anyways, got that. Then my bag. Now, this was a big debate um, because in the hot tent, this is my negative 20 military surplus uh, extreme cold bag and this thing is bulky this thing is warm I am NOT gonna need this if we have wood going but we've been talking um, you know Jake was saying let's let the fire go out at night let's spend a night not in the hot tent go do something in the cold and with temperatures down in the negatives every night and if we're gonna let this fire go out I didn't want to take any chances and you know let's say something happens a, a, a tree falls in the hot tent and we're just stuck without the hot tent it gets ripped to shreds I want to make sure that I'm gonna still stay warm at night with this negative 20 bag and all my layers and if I threw everything on I will be fine without the hot tent I will make it so that's that's the route I went I probably won't be able to zip myself up in it once if the fire is going at night but I think we're gonna let the fire go out and yeah that was just my thought process this was the hardest thing to decide because one of those three foot bags this takes up like 80% of the bag space. Just this right here. This thing is so bulky. That's the only problem with it. But it was like 200 bucks versus a thousand dollar sleeping bag, you know, and this one isn't, it's like, I like this material because you could touch this to a fire and it, it, it wouldn't just like melt and eradicate. It would, it, you know, puts up with some abuse versus my other bag that I usually bring in the hot tent. I touched it to the stove for a split second. I just, and it melted a hole like that, just immediately, just, yeah. So that wasn't fun, and that's why I put the duct tape over it. Okay, I think we've covered most of everything. The only other thing is, is my wristwatch. This is a Casio Pro Trek. I don't even think they make this model anymore, but it's got a compass on it, um, and it tells the temperature, which I don't need anymore, but I think it's important to have a watch if you're going to be with people. Oh, I'm getting a cramp in my foot. And you want to meet at a certain time or something, and uh, yeah, got this. And I've got a compass also. I, I'm sorry that there's a little scatterbrain on this one, but like I said, we're in a time crunch. I've got a compass in here that I didn't mention, a manual one, because I don't always like to rely on this. 
But uh, other than that, I'm bringing out two just beanies because I hike in this. Um, you know, normally I just bring out one of these, and unless it's going to get to the negatives or single degrees, I'll bring out that other hat that I use. But what I've noticed is when I sleep in these, it rips apart. It kind of just destroys the hat and makes them all loose like this. So I've got a designated sleep hat this time. A little unnecessary, but I'm going to keep this one for hiking around because it's nice and tight and a little warmer. And I don't want to destroy it, you know, being on this trip. And when I'm hiking around, have just this loose one that doesn't really keep my ears warm when I'm walking. You know what I mean? So it's just one of those things I thought of bring, a, bring some extra warm stuff. Okay, so other than that... I think we've covered all the gear basically, other than the food and all the little containers and the whole food pack, which I'm not giving any spoilers on that, bringing a whole bunch of snacks and everything. I think that's it. I think we've covered everything. So what I'm going to do now, yeah, I think that's everything. So what I'm going to do now is repack everything all into their bags. I still have to go to the store buy all my food, get it all packed down and all divvied up and for all the meals and everything and then I'm going to tie it down to the sled and then we're going to go pull it around in the dark. I'm going to go take the dogs on a night walk which let's just check the temperature real quick. Oh it's negative three Fahrenheit so that's cold. Yeah that's cold. I don't know what it is in Celsius like negative 20? I don't know negative something like that. <laughs> Maybe not that cold. Something like that. It's cold. But yeah, it'll be, we're just going to go on a walk. I won't be cold because I'll be moving around. But yeah, I'm going to test this out. We'll see how it pulls. I'll go over some powder just to see how it goes through a fresh trail. And hopefully it won't be terrible. <laughs> Which is probably going to still be lots of work because pulling the sleds work. And yeah, that's the next thing we're going to do. I'm going to get it all packed up. And I'll show you how it's going to tighten down on the sled. And then I am going to... Take her for a walk, and that's going to be the end of the video. So, check back with you guys when this is all ready to be packed up. Ha! Huh. <laughs> hey, I changed clothes and everything. Um, yeah, so everything's all packed up. Um, the only thing I don't got here right now is just a little bit of my food, just like the frozen meats and my camera thing, my camera bag of batteries, which is going to go in here. It's a lot of weight. So, a couple quick things I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention is batteries. I'm bringing 20 AA's and 20 AAA's for my camera lights, the lanterns, my headlamps, all that stuff. And then uh, little face covers. So I got, I had to buy two of these thin ones because I couldn't find my good one. Uh, this is just because it's going to be negative 30 Fahrenheit with wind chill. It's going to be cold so we're going to want something to protect our face. So I've got two of these thin ones which the wind is probably going to rip right through and then I've got this fleece one uh, it's just going to have to work you know so that's what I'm going to use I got two of these ones so when they get wet you know one can dry out when I get to the hot tent I'll make it work I'll survive I normally don't use those but it's going to be bitterly cold blasting us in the face so I'm just going to add these in here okay so as far as the bags go now I've got to load it on the sled here and distribute this correctly. This is my lightest bag. This is my sleep stuff. So I'm going to put this one in the middle or the back. And uh, the hot tent's got to go on the front. I hope it's not too heavy, but it's the only thing that fits up here. And then I've got my table chairs and clothes there, but this is everything sleep stuff, some food. And then in this top bag, this is the heaviest bag of all. That's got the ice auger, my essential gear, and uh, a bunch of snacks and food and water and everything I need access to because it's going to sit on top. So let's load this thing up. That's right there. Okay, that fits perfectly. On the sled, this is going to be the heavy sled. So now let's wrap it. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention quick. Um, on the way back from the store, which was an hour or two ago, uh, it's getting pretty late. Yeah. 
um, my brake light, check engine light, and oil light turned on. And it's been bitterly cold here all week. So I pulled the car into the garage. I had to clear a bunch of crap out because I think maybe something got too cold and I'm praying it's better by the morning. Worst case scenario, my car won't work, my truck, and I have to cram all this into Funk's little four door <laughs> and uh, deal with it. Cause I got an eight hour drive tomorrow morning. So yeah, that's, that's enjoyable. It just happened right on the way back when I was just getting ready to be done. Now we've got to lash this thing up, which I have not done before. Got two of these. So we go like this. There's like a rope that runs along these boards here. And then there's these rings. And we're just going to go through here. Okay, so normally I have my sled or my shovel like this, but I ain't going to fit up there, so I'm just going to have it off the back here, and I'm going to run the next strap right through this and then lay this bag on top of this. And that should be fine because all the stuff in the back is squishy. So that should, that should do fine. Pretty secure, I mean, this is, it can't really go anywhere. It could loosen up a hair, but it can't really do much. And then we've just got these extra pieces that'll just go like this. Okay, then it's also got a rope right here. I don't know if this is what it's for, but I'm going to do that. And I'm just gonna tie this up a little bit so it keeps the front pulled up. I'm not sure if that's what this is for or not, but this is what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna tie that off like that. Okay, now I'm gonna lay this. on top of this whole thing. I don't know if that's a good idea like that. I might change it, but this, it should once this gets on here. Let's see what happens when I get this. This one's super happy. Ooh. Okay, now this has got all these crazy straps. I think go, oh, it matches up. This is nice, I wanted this Thing, something like this for a while. This one's actually really nice because it's it's definitely built as a system and I'm kind of digging it so far because it matches up to these loops so you can use the same loops as the lashing. Wow. 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 I am warm right now. I am moving around so fast. I was running through the store, making sure I got everything. I am just hooey. Somehow, well, one thing I'll say is uh, I'm pretty happy that I didn't honestly go on that overnight with Funk because with how long this has taken, if I didn't already prepare a little, this would have been way worse. I would have been way more of a late start. I think I actually make it. I'll make it out of the house on time tomorrow. But I'm gonna be up late tonight, and not get a lot of sleep. Okay, and there we go. We have got a loaded up, super bulky sled. All the weights here. I've got. Whoops. There is not much weight in this bag. Oh, the other thing I forgot to say is, Crocs. I got my hot tent Crocs. Okay, so, whew, now I'm all ready to go, packed up, ready for a week-long winter wilderness adventure. Ne Hi. How you doing, Monty? He's been sitting there the whole time, just, uh, 
watching and waiting. Anyways, I am going to go hike in the dark for a little bit, take the boys out for a walk, and see how this pulls. I'm hoping it's uh, easier than I think it's going to be, because uh, this is going to be a lot of work still. But anyways, that is, that is secure. I hope it's not too tippy. I'll find out, because I'm about to go break trail and just go through, I don't know, we've got a foot or two of powder out there, so... Anyways guys, that's my full loadout. If I miss anything, I'm sorry. Check the video description for any links or anything. Some of this stuff is not going to be on there because I am in a rush. I'm going to edit this up right now after I'm all done hiking this around and uh, get it uploaded so there's something, you know, while I'm out in the woods. But uh, anyways, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy and don't expect this video that I'm doing right now next weekend, hopefully the weekend after. But uh, definitely won't be the next weekend because I'll be coming home right around then. So anyways, guys, I'll catch you at the next video. Have a good one. Come on, let's go for a walk. Yeah, let's go for a walk. Come on, you two roots.